This answers the age-old question, do men look better with a mask on? Yes, we do. <laughs> and my wife keeps asking me, do I look fat with this mask on? And I have no answer for that. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And what a day it is, whether you're live streaming from Wales or British Columbia or Collingwood or Halliburton County, I hope you're having as beautiful a day as we are. Uh, couldn't be better proof that there's lots to be thankful for and that our God is great in the midst of one of the worst time of anybody's life here. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. My name is Rene Benoit. Uh, you, most of you know me as Ben. And welcome to visitors from Brantford or Brampton? Brantford. Brantford. I mix those up. There's a few extra announcements over and above what you saw uh, up there. Uh, one is that next Saturday at 8.30 is the isolated men's breakfast where uh, men have breakfast by themselves in their homes, bacon and eggs, the usual. And we all read the same passage. We all start at 8.30, so we're together apart. Um, you guys know the drill. I'll be emailing the usual suspects with the Bible passage that we're going to be studying. Uh, the second announcement is a communion kit. And I've explained that individually to you how it works. It looks like a little, I left mine out there. It looks like a little coffee creamer and there's a little layer for a wafer and then a little layer for the, the juice. That the juice can be spilled on the carpet is the same color so it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, in First Thessalonians, Harry put in his uh, communion letter, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. The, in this passage, we are exhorted to be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, uh, the pandemic has brought some changes. In six months, many of us hadn't seen each other until last week. And some of us have gained weight during the pandemic. I did not. Some of us have lost weight during the pandemic. I did not. Some of us have gotten much, much closer to their spouses. I did not. <laughs> But I couldn't get possibly closer to my, lovely, my lovely Janice. I, I still have to go home with her later. Um, and some of us, like myself, have got a fancy new hairstyle, if you notice out there in TV land, as I call the live streamers. And uh, not everybody was fond about that last week. One guy told me, I, know, I won't say his name, he said, you need a refund on that $50 haircut, Renee. And uh, so I said to him, I said, Hank Bertrand, I said, uh, <laughs> this is no $50 haircut I'll have you know. This only cost me 18 bucks, and I like it and I'm keeping it. So take that, Hank, if you're out there somewhere. Uh, so I think I am going to ask you to join me in the responsive prayer. Is that right, Harry? Yep, wait till it gets you. Okay, on. we'll put that up on your screen. And do I have it here, Harry, or? You do, but you, you might see it better. Oh, though. I see it there, okay. So I'm the one who's one, and you say all, and do the all part. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank, thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank, thank you, you, Lord for our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. That's the end of it, Harry? No, too much. A little bit more? Yeah. Okay, for health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play. We thank, thank you, you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank, thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank, thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank, thank you, Lord. 
Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, our Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now, um, I was going to originally read Harry's communion letter because I thought it was a wonderful expression of how God is being good throughout this horrible period in history. But Harry said I didn't have time to do that, so I'm gonna, I hope you read it at home. <laughs> and if you haven't, have another look at it. It's excellent. Uh, I will now hand over uh, the uh, sing song to Harry and Melissa. Okay, you need the camera over to me, I think. And I'm gonna get my guitar going. We're taking it slow. Craig's a new learner. Thanks, Craig, for for filling in for Maggie. Without moving the camera, can I? I'll just add that last week there was 26 people here, and this week we have half that number. We thought we'd be swamped and wouldn't know where to put people, but it turns out that people are staying home, getting ready for Thanksgiving. So I hope some of you are watching on live stream. Thank you for those who came today. So, oh, so, um, can, can you turn the cam, main cam on me for a second? You can just do it there. And, I just want to say, I just want to say hi. <laughs> hi! <laughs> and, and, and hi, everybody that came to church. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Ben, for introducing, getting the thing going today. Um, now, you may, if you're listening carefully, Melissa played give, this song, Give Thanks, just before the service started. And that was a teaser, so that you'd want to, uh, you'd want to uh, sing along. So we're going to sing it. It's got a lot of weird uh, repeats. Oh. Hopefully, uh, I sort of know and where I'm going. And we've brought it out and crossed it out many times. <laughs> <laughs> and Craig, if you just go from side to side, there we should be good. So let's, uh, let's sing Give Thanks. to uh, lead us in the prayer of illumination. I guess he's uh, back over there. And the scripture reading. Mm -hmm. 
So our little communion kits that we have, I, I want to let people know that Linda Buck tracked that down on the internet, and people from Brantford? <laughs> One of those Brants. Uh, took a picture of it to show the, their pastor. They were very impressed with it, and it's a really neat little kit. So thank you, Linda Buck, for your uh, hard work and ingenuity. Uh, the Prayer of Illumination. Please join me. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Uh, we're reading uh, Luke 17, verses 11 to 19, and the title of this passage is Jesus Heals Ten Men with Leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they, and as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God, God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were all not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. God always blesses the reading of his holy word. Just a little bit. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that off eventually, but after we sing. Um, okay, so prayers of the people. Um, we have added Katie Woodstra this week. Um, Katie, some of you know the, is it Run for Katie or Walk for Katie? Uh, that's a, it's for the cause uh, for research into epilepsy. So Katie is a local lady uh, who's struggled with this for many years, and she's had a kind of a relapse lately, so she's had a lot of seizures. And uh, so Katie's back on our prayers uh, today. Um, anybody else? Um, some of you, I don't know if you knew Ralph Mintz, who was a, an English gentleman. So and for those of you that uh, are watching online, Ralph Mintz passed away. Um, he had Alzheimer's the last few years. So his wife is Leif Anderson. Um, and uh, the rest of his family, is, he has children. Family of Ralph Mintz. Okay, I guess you can put that screen up and I will, uh, that's our response. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we thank you today that you've called us to come together to uh, uh, actually locally, like right within the building, and also on, online and streaming. Lord, to come together with our hearts in, uh, in prayer, to make our requests known to you, a faithful God. Lord, we do so based on the promises of Christ, that if we ask, we shall receive, if we seek, we shall find, and if we knock, the door will be open to us. Thank you for this great privilege, this duty. Lord, it, it uh, calms our hearts, Lord, to, to cast our burdens upon you, for you care for us. So we lift these needs to you today, and we ask for your intervention, we ask for your healing, we ask for your comfort, that you would meet needs. Lord, especially we pray for the ongoing crisis our world is in because of the pandemic. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us good solutions to this. Um, a vaccine would be wonderful. Uh, ways of healing those who, who contract this. We pray for, for wellness. We pray for, um, uh, Lord, that you, for protection for those who are on the front lines, those who are in the medical world. Um, hospitals and long-term care facilities and doctor's offices, wherever uh, 
people are contacting the public. Uh, Lord, we think of our emergency workers, we think of teachers and bus drivers and people that work in schools, and people that work in the, in the, uh, in the marketplace, in our stores. Lord, uh, Lord, watch over us all. As we have a, a second wave happening, we pray that that might, might, be, uh, might be stopped. And uh, Lord, we would live in peace. We give give uh, wisdom to all those who are in charge of making tough decisions, Lord, that they would have wisdom to do so. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And we pray for uh, today the family of Ralph Mintz, for Katie Woodstrom, Gladys Lamrock, Mishan Hutchings, Jessica Harrison, Barb Foote, Lauren Foote, Molly Freeman and Karen Freibort, Chris London, Sally Moore, Craig Windsor, Don and Karen Tran. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for, pray for Darko Knezvich, for Curtis, Steve Wigan, Sheila Popple, Bob Heaps, Brenda McKee, Sadie Lester, Walt Griffin, Peter Robinson. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. Lord, we pray for our neighbor to the south, the United States, and the concerns and needs they have, especially with an upcoming election, that you would watch over them, keep your peace, keep their, and in your peace, protect their people, and give them uh, skill and wisdom to, to make the right choices. Lord, um, all these things we, we pray to you and lift to you, and plus we, we add some things just in the quiet of our own hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to, we're going to sing, and Craig is here today. He's, uh, he's taken on the job for the first time of uh, running the, the technology, the camera, and the computer, and the stream, and it's just, ah! Thanks, Craig. People online, if you want to make some comments about that. Um, He's got his wife on speed dial. Maggie, Maggie. Okay. Maggie's on speed dial. She did it last week. She, so she had one week's experience. <laughs> She's the expert. <laughs> and uh, we did have a few glitches. We're, we're trying to work those out. We have some ideas in the works. Uh, so sorry, please be patient. Please, uh, please persevere. And uh, Leza, I haven't been able to read the comments yet, and they weren't stored this past week, so I didn't see what you said if somebody said something out there in, in online land. So um, maybe send me an email. Okay, Craig, uh, let's put it on the hymn, and I'll change those. Hopefully this isn't going to work. Craig's going to play the trumpet. Oh, that cannot wait. So is that for after the hymn, I think? No, no, I'm preaching. I forgot about that. I guess I got to preach. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this picture. Craig, good job. It's a good thing he's, he's on the job. Some of you who've been watching online for the last six, seven months will, will know that Maisie, um, Maisie Robinson often produces a picture in line with the scripture of the week. So this is the ten, remember the ten lepers and one came back. So that's Jesus. He's, uh, he's rejoicing and the, the one leper who's come down and he's, he's, been, he's thanking Jesus. Uh, so, nice job, Maisie. That's pretty much on topic. Okay, let's go camera. Lord, uh, as we consider your word, we ask for your help. We ask for your, you to open our hearts and minds. That we might hear your voice, Lord, and... Uh, be transformed and changed according to your your plan in Jesus name amen so I, I will take this off reduce the blare stay back am I ne I'm nice and loud anyway right yep I don't need to talk too loudly what mm -hmm. yeah thankful thankful it's a word that get you gets used a lot so I looked up the, the dictionary definition, as I want to do, see what it really means. 
And the, the dictionary definition I got was feeling or expressing gratitude. Thankful. Feeling. So you don't even have to say anything, but if you feel it, you could be thankful. Thankful. Feeling or expressing gratitude. Semicolon. Appreciative. Okay. Now, I have a bit of a rant about this word. So I feel that the meaning has morphed over, uh, possibly over my own lifetime. It's changed a lot. Uh, and now, nowadays when you hear the word thankful, it may not be what the person has in mind, may not be what you have in mind. Uh, so, so to me, the word thankful is, implies that you have gratitude to someone for something. It's a personal thing. So if, if, you, if you're at a restaurant, not that any of us ever go to restaurants anymore, but say, remember back in those days when we used to go to restaurants? And now the people were going to the restaurants in Toronto, they're, nope. So they're back in phase two. Yikes. So you go to the restaurant and you had a great meal and you're thankful. Well, it's not, to me, it's like you're thankful to the chef or the cook for the wonderful food they prepared. And you're thankful to the server for serving it, you know, and all the people that, that helped make this happen for you. That's, you're thankful to them for this. But uh, it, it strikes me that nowadays when people use the word thankful, they're using it more in the sense of like they're appreciative. Being, it, it's something that we're, we, we're pleased with. I'm, I'm thankful. I'm pleased. I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm happy. Just kind of means happy for a lot of people. So uh, w when you hear people, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that's the way the, the use of this word has shifted. Whereas for the Christian, it is my thought that whenever we're thankful, especially, you know, about general things like the beauty of nature and the food on the table, besides those who have prepared it is the God that gave it to us. I mean, we're thankful to God. And that's what we're, we're, we're really all about today as far as uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. And, and uh, uh, we're thankful to our God. It's a, it's a personal thing. It's, a, it's actually giving thanks and showing, expressing our gratitude to someone who has given us so much. So that's my end of that rant. <laughs> so in the passage today, it's an interesting passage. It's kind of on topic because there's people that are sick and they are kind of quarantined. So they are uh, the ten lepers. The, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, it says, from Galilee. And he's on the border between Samaria and Galilee. Uh, so he runs into ten lepers. And it's interesting that these ten lepers seem to have are a mixed group. And it struck me, I never thought of this before, but often when, when people, you know, there, there are all these separations in society. People that you won't be with. The rich won't be with the poor and the... You know, the blacks won't be with the whites, and the east won't be with the west, etc., etc., etc. So we, we tend to clump into our little tribes. But often when we're in more dire straits, people in prison, people in hospitals, uh, people who, who are sharing some kind of burden together, they will end up with those, those social boundaries to kind of just fade away. It turns out we're all people after them. And that's what happens with these lepers. They're a mixed group. There's some Samaritans, there's some Jews here. So they are, so, so they, we, we, we kind of have to imagine the society by thinking about COVID-19. If somebody comes up to you and you know they've got a big sign on it says, I've got COVID-19, you go, ah, and you run the other way, <laughs> right? So same thing with leprosy. Leprosy, for whatever reason, back in the day, it isn't probably even the same disease that we, we now call leprosy, but it might have con concluded that. Leprosy tended to include almost anything the, some skin lesions, some, you know, some anomalies in, in people's uh, uh, skin and, and appearance. And it may well have been much of the, the same. So, and they didn't know what caused it. They didn't know if like, contagiousness was something they sort of knew about. But also there would be all kinds of superstitious things around this. And you know, the, the, whatever they've got might contaminate them. So stay away. Plus the, the, the law of Moses... Uh, kind of commanded that those who, who had such things were to stay outside the camp until such time as they were better or healed, whatever. And of course, uh, so, so these guys come to Jesus. They, they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. So they call out to Jesus, wonderful thing to do, smart thing to do, have pity on us. Jesus saw them. He said, go show yourselves to the priests. You got to think that's pretty weird. Go show yourselves to the priests. Well, I'm sure the priests would be delighted to have those lepers coming their way. So uh, 
so the, they, they, do, they do that. Well, the thing was, Jesus was towing the line, the Moses, Moses line, the Levitical line, was if you felt that you were healed or you believed you were okay, you were better, first you had to go to the priest before they would let you back into the community. And the priest would check you. Part of the priest's job in the, in the Mosaic law was to check people over. They were kind of the, the medical staff as well as the religious staff in that society. So then if they said, oh, yeah, you, you're all better, you can, you can come back in. So Jesus says, go, go show yourselves to the priests, which is kind of a weird thing to say. Why doesn't he just heal them? But it says they did it. And as they went, they were cleansed. So they're on the way, doing what Jesus told them, trusting what Jesus said, and they got healed. And I think that's, uh, that's very uh, telling. I mean, it's part of, the, part of the name of the story here, part of the, the message here, is when we obey and we trust Jesus in what he says, even though it doesn't maybe make sense all the time, uh, you know, he heals us. And I think there's an allegory here about, about uh, getting to know God and, and encountering Christ. Um, that, that we do that in obedience and in trust. Uh, and then, and then it, the, the effects of that begin to show up in our lives. We, we experience the healing of our souls, for instance. So I, I'm not going to get into the allegorical interpretations. Apparently they're frowned upon these days. <laughs> but I think sometimes they have a place and you know, they're right. So, so 10 are healed, but only one comes back. So let's just read that again. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, we're not all 10 cleansed. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So I actually called this the other Good Samaritan. It's my sermon title today. Because <laughs> we, we heard of the Good Samaritan. That's actually in the same gospel in, in Luke chapter 10. So seven chapters earlier. And of course part of the, the story of the, of the Good Samaritan. It was um, Jesus is, is poking at his Jewish uh, colleagues and comrades. He's Jewish himself. But he sees that they're so stuck on the laws of Moses. So in, in, the, in the Good Samaritan it's a priest comes by. It's supposed to be the best of the best. And then a Levite comes by. He's just, just b barely below a priest. And they, go, they, they pass by on the other side. But the Samaritan comes along, and he takes care of the guy that's fallen into tough times. So Jesus, Jesus that's a parable. Jesus made it up. It's a story. But, uh, you know, who's, who's, who's being the neighbor on, in that story? <laughs> and they say, ah, it's the Samaritan. So again, we find in this story, which Luke has brought, uh, brought to us, that uh, the Samaritan is the good guy. He's the, the only one, and presumably there were a bunch of uh, 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 Jew, Jewish people in, in the group who, did, who did, did trust and obey, but they didn't come back to give thanks. And I think that's a very important point here. Uh, so, so many people who've experienced the grace of God in their lives uh, don't necessarily live a life of thankfulness for the, what's happened. But this guy did, and I think he's, he, is, he is the type for us, back to the allegory, of, of being a true disciple of Christ and what it's all about. At the core of the life in Christ is this thing. It's, it's thankfulness within. It's, it's praise. It's worship. And, you know, that's, that's somehow the core experience of, uh, uh, of being a Christian. Um, I don't even know how to... to it's very difficult to, for me to separate between what it means to be to thankfulness or praise or worship. To me, they kind of blend together. There's different nuances to them, but they're kind of the same thing in many ways. So this thing that just kind of bubbles up in the spirit of the redeemed. It bubbles up in the spirit of those who have encountered Jesus Christ and known his grace. It's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of automatic. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, birds they sing. Because that's the way they're built. <laughs> Frogs, they croak. And fish, they, you know, swim. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But, you know, the, the, the world is full of those kind of automatic, natural responses. And once you're a Christian, once you encounter Jesus, you, your spirit is such that it bubbles up with thanksgiving. And, you know, so, I mean, I often think, uh, I've read this somewhere, and it kind of sticks, I think it's biblical, that the, the human, a human being is kind of threefold. There's body, soul, and spirit. And so our bodies have these natural things. They're automatic. If you see Thanksgiving dinner and you're hungry, you salivate. <laughs> you can't stop yourself. <laughs> I need food. I want that now. I had it last night. That's how I know. And uh, 
or, or you know, so, so or I, I like to swim underwater. If you come up from after swimming underwater, for some reason, you naturally just take a great big breath. <laughs> you just got to do it. It's it's automatic, and and we our souls are are another part of us. You know, the the feelings and the, the thoughts, and so for instance, if we if we are in a lot have a experienced a loss or something very sad or we're in grief, we cry. It's not something we, we, a lot of times we just can't stop ourselves. It just happens. It just bubbles up from within. Or on the other side of that, we hear something really funny, we laugh uproariously. We can hardly stop ourselves. I remember as a kid first watching The Three Stooges. <laughs> and I, well, I didn't need a diaper, but it was close. That's what I'm just going to say. <laughs> and it's, so, so that's what our spirits are like. When, when our spirit is given life by Jesus Christ, we are new creatures. Scripture says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, all things have become new. And, you know, in Romans 8, Paul, Paul talks about, uh, if the spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then the same spirit gives life to your mortal body. I mean, there's a change that happens, a transformation, uh, which is all through the New Testament. And... Uh, and that change vivifies, it enlivens our spirits. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And it, that, the nature of that spirit is just to give thanks. So uh, Rene talked about the letter I wrote, and I quoted from 1 Thessalonians, in all things, or in all circumstances, give thanks, Paul says. Now he's not just telling us something that's way beyond our capacity to pull off. <laughs> he's speaking to the spirit of the Christian. And he, he's, he's reminding us that this is what the Holy Spirit uh, builds up and, and, and produces within the heart and the spirit of a Christian. We are thankful about so many things. Of course, they, and uh, always, hopefully, as Christians, I mean, it's just the obvious things, a whole lot of them were in that prayer at the beginning. Uh, family and friends and food and provision for our needs and health and, and, uh, and fun and entertainment and... Uh, and beauty that surrounds us. A lot of our pictures, we had pictures. Uh, the, if you saw the pictures earlier, uh, they were all local, I think, lo local Halbert County pictures of, uh, of the color. that We had wonderful colors this year. But half of those were Judy Nyman. Uh, Judy Nyman's pictures, another half were people, just local people. Some of them might have been from the Echo, but don't tell anybody because we're in trouble. <laughs> but just the, the beauty that surrounds us, we're thankful for all these kinds of things. Um, and the list just goes on. Good books. You know. uh, a walk in the forest. Uh, just love uh, people close to us that, that share our lives with us. But the biggest thing is still the gift of Jesus. The biggest thing is the gift of Jesus. The sacrifice of Jesus. Through him, because through him, although we are broken human beings, when we come to him, we are completely forgiven. I love saying that. Completely forgiven. That is so sweet. And as the years go by, if anything, we should realize we're actually building up the debt if it wasn't to be forgiven, you know? So, uh, you know, in my case, I'll admit to over 60 years, and all the things that I've done wrong and all the things, not that I'm off the hook with, if I've hurt people, I need to, I need to apologize, I need to make it right, but for all those things that I've done through Christ, I am forgiven completely. And so are you through Christ. Forgiveness is so huge. And because we're forgiven, then we can be re we're reconciled to God. We're reconciled. We, we can now have a relationship with the living God. We actually get to know God, talk with God, be, be friends with God, <laughs> and walk in the garden with God, and talk with God, and, and, and just commune with God. It's amazing because of what Jesus did. You know, we're given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides inside us. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit because Jesus did what he did. We have everlasting life. We get to live forever and ever because of what Jesus did. And we're partners with God in his mission to this world to restore the creation. He, he's brought us on board. Say, okay, you, you're going to work with me. And we're working with God. So we have great purpose in our lives to see his grace and his, his generosity and his kindness and his transformational power work in our world and in our society and in our lives and, the, and those of others. We're part of it. And all that starts at the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. 
So he invites us to give thanks for all things, but especially for that. Through this simple meal, we're going to share of bread and of wine. It's so simple. Shall we? Let's. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that uh, you are our main joy. You have given us all that we have and all that we are. And for these things, we give you thanks. And that you gave up your life for us, that we might be delivered, that we might be free, that we might be forgiven, that we might know you. For this we give you thanks and praise. Lord, may our hearts be filled more and more each day, even in tough circumstances, with thanksgiving to you, our God. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to sing as we prepare for, um, for communion. We have never done this before, so this is going to be tricky. So we're going to get Craig. Craig's going to put the opening picture on there. And I will let me just see if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay. And he's going to play trumpet once uh, he gets in place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess if people can still hear, I guess they can hear me. Please, yeah, yeah. you can prepare to, if you have some elements at hand, you can share with us as we, uh, we have communion today. Bread and coffee. Hmm? Bread and coffee. Bread, bread. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully somebody. You can stand. Far away enough, I think we're gonna get this off. In the name of Jesus Christ, I invite all who profess him as Lord and Savior and are seeking to follow in his way and to live in unity, one with the other, to come to his table with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving. Eat and drink for your strengthening that you may grow in grace and be blessed with all spiritual blessings, remembering that we, although many, are one body in him. Okay, let's start our liturgy. The Apostles' Creed, together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please have a seat. Let's continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our, the Lord our God. For it is holy and right to do so. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created heaven with all its hosts, and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being, and have preserved us by your providence. You have shown us the fullness of your love by sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember with this communion the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain unity of faith and be more like our Lord Jesus Christ. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down the powerful benediction of your Holy Spirit upon these elements of bread and wine, that being transformed from a common to a sacred and mystical use, they may represent to us with true effect the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that in the use of them, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we may be made to partake really and truly of his blessed life. Amen. explanation again when you go to partake. There are two little lift up things. The top one is very hard to see and that, that opens up to you to your little wafer. And the second one you have to be really careful with opens up to the juice. So that's why you need your napkin. And hold that bottom sturdily when you go to pill out because it is real grape juice. The top one is clear plastic. The yeah. top one is clear plastic so not it's a little hard to see. Not the foil. When Kelly tried it the first time he pulled them up together. So. Don't be like, don't be a callous. So I, I will, let's do this. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Poured forth for you. Okay, let's, let's do it. Take your bit. Very gently. Yeah, you have to pull your mask down to do it all kinds. <laughs> Take, eat, do this in remembrance of him. Opened up the second part. Sounded sounded like people were doing that. Very carefully. I did it for the first time at Lachlan, so I know. <laughs> Take, drink. This cup is the New Testament in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sins. Do this in remem remembrance of Him. body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. Amen. Let's unison prayer, Craig. Let's pray this together. Together. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus Christ, the bread of life and the true vine. Thank you for drawing us to his table today as we celebrate your love together with our brothers and sisters around the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing those last verses of Come You Thankful People Come. Yeah, oh yeah, so we have to go back out that way in the service. Uh, there's a garbage back there if you want to leave it, leave your stuff with you when you go. Just drop it in that. Uh, or you can take it with you home if you like. Um, so Craig will get that picture up and then he'll come up and play the trumpet. Beautiful. passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ.
May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen.